Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where our goal is to debate specific stock investment ideas. Uh, the votes are in, and a lot of votes for Shopify. Uh, there was also a lot of votes for Disney, so I'm going to try to get to that one next. But today, uh, we're going to talk about Canada's tech superstar. Its shares are up 2,300% over five years. It's uh, simply incredible. Let's jump into it. So introduction. Uh, Shopify, which is a provider of e-commerce software and solutions, is now Canada's second largest company by market cap, second only to the Royal Bank of Canada. Um, after trading down in March, and we'll look at the stock price chart in a minute, amid COVID-19, I'm dubbing this the Air Jordan of stocks, it soared 65% in April, and it's now up 60% year to date. Highlights. Uh, the company's grown revenue at an incredible clip. So revenue CAGR compound annual growth rate of 65% over four years, currently growing revenue at 50%. So despite the higher base, continuing to grow quite nicely. Clean balance sheet with almost no debt. Strong gross margins of about 55%. Industry tailwinds. We all know that e-commerce continues to shake, uh, take share from uh, traditional retail. And of course, they also have insider ownership of about 11%. Uh, and they do have the, the founders and insiders have control through a dual class share structure. So this video is going to review Shopify to see if it represents an attractive opportunity for investors, include key considerations as well as bull base and bear case scenarios for the stock. And oh yeah, you better believe we're going to talk about valuation. Kind of scary uh, for these lofty high flying tech names. If you're new to the channel, um, please like, subscribe, and, and uh, if you like the video, share it with a friend, I'm trying to grow the community here. Okay, so Shopify, I think they do a great job in their investor presentation of, sometimes a picture tells a thousand words of what they're trying to do. And I think essentially, you know, Shopify is an e-commerce software provider, uh, as well as they've, they've been bolting on other solutions like payments. Um, and uh, some processing and logistics. So you can see here up top, one platform, and that being Shopify, Shopify, every channel, any device. So if you picture this store here, they've got their online presence. Uh, they might have a bricks and mortar presence. Um, they might have an Amazon store, Facebook, Facebook as well, or potentially pop-ups. So Shopify is really trying to position itself as an agnostic, uh, customer friendly option um, for e-commerce and because of their data and analytics on the back end um, their software apparently works really well single integrated back office between your marketing your analytics your payments your inventory management and fulfillment and shipping etc so you can see here on the left hand side um, the gross merchandise volume through Shopify was over 60 billion in 2019. Subscription revenue, which is really that software that, that drives um, e-commerce websites. So for Shopify, plans start from $29 a month for entrepreneurs, and then they move up to $2,000 a month or more for larger brands. Merchant solutions, which we'll see is a growing piece of their revenue picture is more success-based and that's a percentage of sales or transaction costs for Shopify payments or fulfillment. Here is a look at the share price and I'll be honest it's, it's kind of nice to look at a share price that's going the right way for a change uh, over the last five years and just show you that the share price is in US dollars. Um, the shares are up almost 2300 um, percent starting just below $30 uh, here back five years ago and um, I've got the Wiley Coyote rocket ship um, just rocketing up here to over $640 a share currently. EV to sales is about 48 times so uh, the valuation is not cheap, uh, does not pay a dividend and it's not yet profitable. Quick look at the financials here, and this is pulled from the notes in their um, annual report. And we'll just run through a few things quickly here. 
the first of which being revenue, and we'll talk about the mix a little bit more later, but you can see the revenue growth here, 673 over a billion to 1.5, 1.6 billion. So growing extremely quickly with some pretty large top line numbers. I mean, this is, this is not a small business. Gross margins of about 55%. So you can see that, um, and really the key takeaway here is you've got strong gross margins that are able to fund significant increases in sales and marketing and R&D costs. So if you look at the next uh, sort of highlighted box here, you can see that they've grown sales and marketing in R&D uh, quite significantly uh, over the last couple of years, but that's been funded uh, by the revenue growth and the strong growth margins. And here we'll point out that they are not yet profitable, although we'll see on, on the next slide that if you do back out stock-based compensation, uh, they are cash flow positive, if you will. And so here we are. So stock-based stock compensation, I thought it was important to note, it is uh, a rather large item for Shopify. So you can see here in their annual report on the cash flow statement, 158 million of stock-based compensation in 2019 so that's a large item if you add that back um, there's your net loss for the year and some of the other working capital changes they are cash flow positive at least uh, from a operating activity activities perspective uh, they've got 70 million of cash flow from operations obviously you know from my perspective these are non-cash but they're very real um, and lead to future dilution so when we talk about our valuation later We've accounted for that uh, in our valuation. Oh, I had one more of those. Whoops. Financials. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out here is just uh, the revenue profile uh, that we talked about. You can see merchant solutions in the light uh, green or aqua, and then the dark green, you can see subscription solutions. And you can see just visually that merchant solutions are growing more quickly than subscription. And what's the point? Well, we've got an overall revenue CAGR of 65%, merchant solutions growing faster than subscription. And the key here is that merchant gross margins are about 38% versus solutions gross margins of 80%. So on a blended basis, 55% gross margins for Shopify, but as, assuming this trend continues and merchant solutions continue to outpace uh, growth in subscriptions, uh, you might see gross margins uh, come under pressure. A little bit on the industry here. I found a great uh, chart and shout out to uh, Digital Commerce 360. And I've put the, uh, I've put the uh, link down below here if you want to check that out. Um, it's a great chart. Just looking at e-commerce sales growth over time. And over the last 10 years, you can see that it's averaged around 15%. I think this is going to be important when we think about our assumptions going forward. Um, that you, and this is just U.S. So U.S. e-commerce sales growing at about 15% a year. And that's been fairly consistent. Market share is another um, key variable. And Shopify in their Q4 presentation uh, puts updated uh, chart together. You can see Amazon still is the behemoth at uh, 37%. And here they're, they're talking about share of U.S. retail e-commerce sales, and they're running it by um, gross merchandise value, that GMV um, stat that we talked about before. Shopify here is number two and uh, growing quickly at 5.9% share. So takeaway for investors, Shopify is number two. Can it continue to take share and can it approach Amazon? Competition. Uh, so in my view, ha having a view on competition, both current and future here is one of the key elements uh, to developing a thesis on Shopify. And uh, the irony is palpable. We're not going to spend too much time on it. Um, just want to make sure we keep the video length in check here. Um, but I think, you know, if you were to take a position in Shopify, you'd want to have a view on how you think the competitive landscape is currently and how it's going to evolve. And I thought we could just discuss a few, a few of the elements. So Amazon, clearly the market share leader. They've got a marketplace. And I think one important differentiator is, you know, they generate uh, advertising revenue from some of their merchants who want preferential placement 
in their marketplace. Um, Amazon can also be a competitor. Um, we've seen in recent years them launching their own version of products, particularly ones that sell well. So if you're a third party um, business selling your products on Amazon, you have to be a little bit cautious or, or a little bit worried that they may uh, launch a version of your product themselves. Um, and I think that's an interesting uh, point of differentiator. And then obviously Amazon's the logistics and delivery powerhouse. I mean, that's, um, they've, they've got a huge advantage there. Shopify, and I'm just comparing these two uh, and very high level. They're number two, as we said, high growth, um, more channel agnostic. So you can see Shopify's positioning itself to work online with Amazon, with Facebook. They're trying to position themselves as sort of the backbone. Less of a competitive threat to customers, no advertising, no advertising revenue, um, expanding merchant services, but the core is easy um, and easy to implement software, sorry. So uh, nowhere close to uh, the size and scale and scope of logistics and, and delivery that Amazon has. It's really more of a shop, shop uh, software, sorry, software play plus some add-ons. And I think the reason why competition is such an important aspect here is we can see how attractive the industry and the space is. So future state of competitors, particularly as digital payments and e-commerce providers converge, I'll be really curious to watch that unfold. There's a lot of big, big um, competitors um, and players in digital payments. And I think those could potentially converge over time. Comparables, and here we're just having a little bit of fun. Uh, I've got the apples and oranges. Uh, we're comparing apples and oranges here. Um, take this with the biggest grain of salt, but I did think it was, inter it was interesting just to point out how Shopify sets up uh, relative to uh, two, two peers, one peer that's real and one that's just talked about because it's uh, a top um, size company in Canada. So from Market cap and revenue perspective here, you can see Amazon is the beast, and then there's Royal Bank and Shopify um, close together in terms of market cap size. If you look at it from a revenue perspective, shop, uh, Amazon at close to 300 billion, Royal Bank at 32 billion, and Shopify at 1.5, you can barely see it on the chart, um, which speaks to what we'll talk about next, which is the valuation. So price to earnings, Amazon trades at 110 times PE um, and four times revenue. Royal Bank trades at 10 times PE and an EV to revenue for Royal Bank's not meaningful. And then you've got Shopify, not profitable yet. So price to earnings is not, uh, not meaningful and they trade at 48 times uh, revenue. So, I mean, I think if there is a takeaway here, it's that, um, uh, Shopify is richly valued and which which implies that there's a lot of growth priced in to the stock so key considerations and then we'll jump into our valuation methodology and bull base and bear case scenarios so strengths uh, software IP ease of ease of use it's I've, I've often heard that it's one of the easiest solutions for new online businesses to get up and running and we know their core is that that real small customer uh, and they've been trying to grow and, and add on medium and larger businesses over time. They are now a significant player and they have uh, become one of the few key incumbents. Uh, they've got a growth mindset as well with R&D driving new products. They haven't just sat still, uh, they have continually continuing to add on new elements, uh, particularly on the merchant side, and they've got a clean balance sheet. Risks. Competition, we talked about it, Amazon being the big one, but there's also potential for future entrants. Ability to sustain growth rates and support the valuation, talking about a company that's been growing revenue at 65% a year, can it keep it up? Not profitable uh, at this stage, although cash flow is positive. Ability to move up market, onboard larger businesses, that's one of their um, key strategic uh, initiatives. And then lastly, they do have single, single supplier risk on their Shopify payments. If you recall, they, they had that agreement with Stripe. And so if anything were to happen there, uh, they're, they're fully reliant on Stripe for that um, solution. 
key drivers, and, and we'll, we'll bring this into our valuation discussion, e-commerce industry growth, Shopify market share, medium and large company wins, uh, so moving up market, competition, and then margin pressure. We talked about merchant solutions growing faster than subscription. So valuation approach, and uh, I wanted to put this here because it's not, uh, it's very different than some of the stocks that I, I typically profile. So high growth, high multiple tech companies are difficult to value, particularly for a fundamental investor like myself. Uh, you know, it requires looking several years out in the future and making assumptions. Slight changes can make a big difference, as, as you're going to find out. Um, but that being said, I can't ignore how well several of these uh, dis disruptive tech companies have performed. Shopify shares up 23% over the last five years. Look at Facebook, look at Google, look at Netflix. Um, and so I'm continuing to expand my investing horizons and uh, valuation multiples. Um, so the valuation we're going to do is based on a multiple of earnings five years out. So one thing I will draw the line in the sand uh, I'm happy to, to go out and forecast, but ultimately, I, you know, to value a business, you still have to look at the present value of, of future free cash flows that it's going to generate. And so in this case, because it's in a high growth mode, let's push it out five years and see what profitability looks like at that time. And we're going to discount it back to today at uh, 10%. Here we go at 10%, which is, you know, assumed cost of equity. You can obviously adjust that if you like. Um, revenue forecast is driven by the assumption for industry growth and market share gains. And then gross margin forecast uh, is driven by mix as well as competition. And then lastly, sales and marketing and R&D as a percentage of revenue. Those are some assumptions that, that uh, I made. So here's what the bull case looks like, and it'll be a little bit small on your screen, but I made uh, a very, um, very concise model, just, just modeling out the key assumptions that I wanted to look at here. And we'll go through those assumptions right now for the bull case, and then we'll just show each scenario and the result. So you can see here uh, revenue of 1.578 billion in 2019, and we're going to assume a 45% revenue kegger um, for the next five years and in our bull case. And that's 15% in industry growth, which we talked about. And plus we're assuming their market share triples. So it goes from 5% to about 15%. That's our assumption. That's what gets us to our, our 45% um, revenue growth. Next big assumption we're going to make is 50% um, gross margins. And so as we talked about before, just trying to, there we go. Uh, just trying to get my pointer out there. Um, as we talked about before, gross margins are currently 55%, but as merchant grows in share, which it has been, that's going to drag gross margins down a little bit. Um, and so we've, we've put gross margins in the out year at 50%. Next, for sales and marketing and R&D, we've put those at 7% and 10% of sales, uh, respectively. And you can see here, they're currently sales and marketing is almost 500 million. So we've only increased that to 700 million out five years. So a significant sort of scale down in terms of the percentage of revenue. Um, same for R&D. Um, it continues to grow. Uh, it sort of almost triples from where it, from where it was um, but believing you know in this in this in sector they're going to continue to need about 10 percent of sales um, in r d and continue to invest in the product and, and innovation 25 percent tax rate um, nothing really more to say there and then i've gone with an 80 times pe and if you put all that together oh sorry there's one more thing I've also assumed uh, 2 million shares per year of dilution. So we talked about the stock-based compensation being a real cost. Uh, looking back historically and roughly at what they're issuing, it's a, it's a guess uh, or a rough assumption, but I think it's close enough. 
uh, 2 million shares per year dilution. So it takes the total shares outstanding from about 119 currently to 129 in 2024. And if you do all that and you discount it back at 10%, um, you get a share price of $892 or up 35% uh, from today's prices. So just important to note that we have discounted back by 10% per year over five years. So um, the value out in 2024 would be higher than 892. Uh, but the value today for the purposes of thinking about whether Shopify is an attractive investment is 892. Okay, um, so that's the bull case. We'll run through the illustrative scenarios here. So on the bull case, we just talked about it. It's a five-year, 45% revenue kegger, 15% uh, industry growth plus market share triples. Gross margins held at 50%. Sales and marketing, 7% of revenue. R&D, 10%. G&A, 250 million. 25% tax rate, 2 million shares dilution per year. And then we take 80 times um, their 2024 net income of 2.3 billion. It's important to note 80 times what is a five years out profit figure. Um, and so, you know, in my view, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be aggressive here. Uh, I'm doing my best. Let me know how I'm doing. Uh, and that gets the implied share price of $892, $892 again. Uh, once you discount that back at 10% per year. And that's 35% ups, upside from today. Base case is essentially the same top line growth, but lower margins. So the uh, revenue growth, we've kept the same. Gross margins, here we go. Uh, we've dropped to 45%. So not a ton, but we've taken it down from 50% to 45. The assumption here is, is a, more competition. Um, competition, maybe a little bit of pricing pressure. Um, it, it could even be, you know, more mix on the on the merchant side, uh, but just being more conservative on our margin assumption. And then the other big change we've we've done here is, you know, assuming a bit more competition, we've moved sales and marketing expense back up to ten percent of revenue instead of seven. Those are the two changes, and then we've dropped our multiple uh, from eighty to sixty. So 60 times 2024 net income of 1.7 billion here, discount all that back, you get an implied share price of $495, which is 25% less uh, than the current share price. And then finally, the bear case, um, the market share here only doubles. Uh, so we, they've still, in the bear case, they've still got a five year 30% revenue kegger. Um, Gross margins and all the other assumptions are the same as the base case. And again, I've, I've dropped my PE multiple here to 45. So in this scenario, you'd have net income of almost a billion dollars out in 2024, put a 45 times multiple on it, discount it back. Now, this is an implied share price of $197 or down 70% from the current share price. So um, and we'll talk about uh, a few things in our concluding slide. Uh, just as some some takeaway points So here we go You know to me Shopify is an incredible business seems to have everything going for it industry tailwinds Scalable model high margins phenomenal growth. It's tough to find an investor that would not want to own this stock Only question is valuation I mean if you looked at if you looked at the materials the annual report and you didn't look at the share price You'd say for sure. I want I want to own this company. It just um, it's just that valuation that uh, you've got to decide uh, whether it's fair, whether it's uh, attractive. At current levels, there's no question Shopify share price is discounting a very bright future. And we just referred to our, our bull base and bear case scenario. You saw our bear case scenario, we still have revenue growing at 30% a year for five years. Um, and uh, you can see what that does to the potential share price. On valuation, I did my best. I did my best to be aggressive, but of course, small assumption changes have large impacts. And here's where I may be off. They could have more market share gains. They could go 4x or 5x from here, as opposed to two or three, which is what I was talking about. Maybe they catch Amazon. Um, number two, more operating leverage. Uh, you know, I, sales and marketing R&D expenses could be lower in the out years. 
uh, than, than what I've assumptioned. And the big one, of course, uh, the huge one is valuation. Um, higher terminal P multiples, maybe 80, may, maybe 80 times as low. Um, and obviously that's going to be a huge swing factor in what the, um, what the potential share price will be. So uh, last point for me, to me, the entry of new competition is also one of the key wildcards to watch for, given just how attractive uh, this industry is. So that's it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm really curious in your thoughts on this one. It's, um, it's a super fun one to research. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Has the share price gotten out ahead of itself? Or really, are, are, am I being too conservative on my valuation assumptions? And uh, is this a buy here, given, given, all, of the, the macro, um, given all the macro tailwinds? as well as the incredible growth that Shopify is uh, generating themselves. Um, we'll be back soon with more content, but until then, happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand.